It's been revealed. It's been lying under our noses the entire time. The truth of Area Zero. The hidden treasure. The mysteries unraveled. Everything about Area Zero's hidden treasure was revealed within five minutes of the teal mask. And not only can this hidden treasure of Area Zero bring the dead back to life like it did with the Loyal Trio, not only can it give a reason for Ogre Pond to terrestrialize on its own, but it can bring Pokemon from the past, Pokemon from the future, create the terrestrial phenomenon, it can even create time machines, and so, so much more. And we're going to be covering and answering all of this in today's video. So, what is the true hidden treasure of Area Zero? Let's take a deeper look. But first, let's ask Ash Ketchum what he thinks. I was recently introduced to this super cool platform, Doppel AI. It's this amazing space where you can converse with your favorite characters from popular shows and movies, and I've personally been interacting with my boys Brock and Ash. Let me show you some funny interactions I had with Ash here. Do you think Chili has a son? I don't have concrete information on that, but I would be surprised if Chili had a little fireball of his own running around. And of course, never forget to keep that lighthearted and energetic Ash Ketchum spirit alive in your content. That's actually pretty good advice. Not even alive. For, for a Pokemon YouTuber, that was pretty good. It might be worth noting that Doppel offers unlimited messaging at absolutely no cost. After some time, I just kept talking to Ash and Brock and I was enjoying my time with them. It was crazy. Again, for Pokemon, they have Ash and Brock, but they also got Misty and Mewtwo, and I think they're gonna have some more soon. And also, I heard that they might be having voice features eventually, so you might hear some AI Ash catch from AI Brock, you never know. They might just give AI Sada and AI Tour a run for their money. If you're as interested as I am, consider joining the Discord, which will be in the link in the description down below. They're not only rolling out freaking giveaways like a chance to win Oculus Quest for 300, but it's also the best place to stay updated with all the new cool features that Doppel is launching. So what are you waiting for? Doppel is free, and you can talk to Ash Ketchum right now. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's DLC was packaged and given to us not as a teal mask in the Indigo Disc, but as the hidden treasure of Area Zero, with two parts to it. Part 1 being the teal mask, and part 2 being the Indigo Disc. But I want to stress and emphasize the fact that the umbrella title for this DLC is the hidden treasure of Area Zero. Because for the most part, if you go through the teal mask, outside the addition of Briar and her interest in the great creator of Paldia, there doesn't seem to be much going on with Area Zero at all. What is this supposed great hidden treasure? If this is part one of the DLC, then surely the treasure was around somewhere here. Somewhere within this DLC, we would have been able to figure out or at least see a glimpse of this treasure's presence. And while it may seem like it's nowhere to be seen at first, the treasure shows up through a sequence of events, with those events all starting once you arrive at the Crystal Pool. Now, the Crystal Pool's major significance is the fact that it closely resembles Area Zero. In fact, it doesn't just resemble Area Zero, it's most likely a small part of it that got here somehow. How that happened is a mystery for another time, but the Crystal Pool is the major tie-in to the rest of Paldea, and might even be what caused some of the Terror Raid dents to appear in Kitakami. But if the aesthetics, music, and the feel of the pool weren't enough, in terms of the Teal Mask, we can hard confirm that the Crystal Pool is definitely what is related to the hidden treasure of Area Zero, as we see the Crystal Pool as one of the symbols in the four corners of the Hidden Treasure of Area Zero title. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let me take you back to the Scarlet and Violet books, or in this case, the Scarlet and Violet game covers in real life. Both the books and the covers have the same four symbols around the title, and all four of these symbols are significant to the game's plot, and specifically Area Zero. For example, the one in the top left corner is the same symbol in Area Zero on the weird tablet thing, and the other three are all tied in in similar ways. Just like that, if you take a look at the title for the DLC, you'll see four new symbols which are all going to be related to the hidden treasure, and sure enough, if you look at the top right image, that is a map location of the Crystal Pool in Kitakami. So we now know without a doubt that the Crystal Pool is the major relation between Kitakami and the Hidden Treasure. But why am I saying that it's at this point that the Hidden Treasure starts to reveal itself to us? Well, let's take a look at the events of the Teal Mask. You and Carmine learn the truth of Ogre Pond and want to return its mask. However, the crystal on its mask is chipped and so Kieran and Carmine's grandpa says that he can fix it if the two of you can go up to the crystal pool and gain a piece of crystal from there and bring it back to him. This crystal being of course the same crystal from Area Zero, which is again in the teal mask that the grandfather keeps with him while you two go explore the crystal pool. 
you go to the crystal pool and Carmine eerily mentions that there's a weird rumor that you can meet people here who have passed away. Okay, and uh, conveniently and magically, a boss Milo comes out of nowhere and has a fragment of the crystal. So once you beat it, you retrieve the crystal clutter, and conveniently, Briar happens to come by and mention that the crystal pool's water emit the energy of the same wavelength as terrestrial energy. You guys ignore her and go down to tell Grandpa that you got the crystal he needed to repair the mask, only then to find out that Kieran had stolen the teal mask and is now near Loyalty Plaza, where the Loyal Trio's remains reside. You then go and locate Kieran only to find him enraged from the very moment you see him for him being treated like an outcast. He then asks to battle you and if you win, he'd give you the mask in exchange. And once you beat him, instead of giving you the mask, he first can't comprehend why he can't be as good as you. And with all the hatred in his heart and the same anger in his eyes, Kieran in frustration punches the sight of the loyal trio's remains and then hands over the mask. He runs off after this, and Carmine is left talking to you, wondering what exactly had gotten into him. But before she can think about it any further, the Loyal Three awaken from their slumber, from the afterlife into reality. Three dead Pokemon have seemingly out of nowhere come back from the dead. But the truth is, it wasn't a random coincidence at all. Because this is the work of the hidden treasure of Area Zero. And what is that treasure you may ask? The ability to create anything you want into a reality with three simple ingredients. A crystal from Area Zero, a strong unwavering thought or emotion, and an action to follow. Allow me to explain using this event from the Teal Mask as an example before I dive into the remainder of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. The Loyal Trio has been brought back to life, but why? At first, I thought that Kieran somehow wielded his strong emotions to bring them back to life. That the hate in his heart, that the feeling of being an outcast was so strong that he wanted to make us feel like an outcast, and that his punch was the trigger to bring back the loyal trio. And sure enough, that seems to be the case. At least partially. Not only do the events of Kieran punching the stone and the loyal trio coming back happen back to back, but if you slow down the clip of Kieran's punch, you'll see that Kieran's fist actually emits this purple aura. A malicious aura which I feel is his intention and emotion to make us feel outcasted being shown off. Because his emotions did reach a peak here. But why did that cause the loyal trio to rise? Emotion alone wouldn't do that now, would it? No. But with the Area Zero Crystal, it would. Remember, at this point in time, though you had beaten Kieran in battle, he had still withheld the mask as he laid out the punch. This means that he was holding onto the Area Zero Crystal as the Teal Mask was only missing a fraction of the crystal it once had. The rest was still remaining, meaning that Kieran was wielding this crystal. And if you remember from earlier, out of seemingly nowhere, Carmine mentioned that sometimes people see the spirits of the dead end up above at the Crystal Pool, and only the Crystal Pool. This does not get mentioned anywhere else in Kitakami so it's safe to assume that this is an Area Zero thing and not a Kitakami thing. Shout out to Birdkeeper Toby for mentioning this very, very important piece of dialogue to me, as I would have missed it without him. So with Kieran wielding the crystal, he was able to bring the dead spirits of the Loyal Trio back? No, that's not right. They're alive through and through. So what's going on here? This is where we begin to break everything down across Scarlet and Violet to answer this question. I believe that the three ingredients I mentioned earlier of a crystal fragment of Area Zero, a strong unwearing thought or emotion, and an action to manifest a thought or emotion is what the hidden treasure of Area Zero really is. And I think it's what has happened with every single unexplainable aspect of this game. With Kitakami being a Japanese based region, it makes sense for people to have things like spirits, yokai, people from the afterlife, and other such things of that nature in their consciousness. And so if their thoughts become strong enough and they pray to see their loved ones again, they may just get reconnected with their loved ones at the crystal pool due to the Area Zero Crystal. With Kieran, he felt so outcasted that he probably wanted us to feel what it meant to be outcasted and beaten up. His might have been more vague, but that emotion would have been reminiscent of the Loyal Trio, thus bringing them back to life. With the Paradox Pokemon, they're all based off urban legends. This is important as it shows the difference in consciousness of the East and the West, of Kitakami and Paldia. 
Kitakami is more focused on spirits, while Paldia is more focused on Pokemon of the past and the future, and things you would see in urban mythology. With Heath and the others going down to Area Zero this way, with such a strong thought or emotion in mind, and the search being their own form of action, it's possible that they brought into existence Pokemon that look like Pokemon that we know of, but that are from the past and the future, or Pokemon spliced with urban legends solely based off of what they wanted to see. This would also explain why we end up seeing the Paradox Beasts and Swords, as we have a vision of them in the Scarlet and Violet books, and now the next time we go down there, we would probably conjure them up through our minds and make them into real Pokemon. This would also explain why that even though Kieran was able to bring back the dead, as to why AI Sada and AI Turo couldn't bring back the real Sada and Turo. As their AI, they don't have the necessary emotions to conjure up anything. It's just data. They don't have all the necessary ingredients to create such a reality. It's possible that while Sada and Turo did work on the time machine, that it was eventually the hidden treasure that made the time machine work, or in a way brought the time machine into existence after Sada and Turo became one pointed with their mission and tried to create the time machine themselves. Again, having all three ingredients there. That's referring to the real Sada and Turo, by the way. Terrestrialization would also happen the same way. You have the Terra Orb, which has the crystal from Arizer within itself, and you have a strong emotion to a certain battle strategy, and you conjure it up that way. And for Ogre Pond, this also works as it's a Pokemon that can terrestrialize on its own, but because of that, it also wants to protect itself and scare away its enemies, which is why it has its own terrestrial form. The Terra Crystal is responding to its thoughts and emotions of protection, and thus, it's making the mask way bigger than Ogre Pond itself. Now this being said, I definitely think there's more to terrestrialization and why we're limited to just one type. And I'm sure that'll be explained later on in the DLC, but yes, essentially what I'm getting at is that this theory basically states that everything and anything is possible with the hidden treasure of Area Zero, and that everything, dead spirits, bringing back dead Pokemon and people, terrestrialization, paradox Pokemon, time machines, everything, everything can be created with these three ingredients working as one. With Terrapagos' hidden treasure of Area Zero, especially if all these crystals are a part of Terrapagos, then it makes Terrapagos the reason behind all of this. But it literally is a way to manifest anything you want into reality. It's not exactly imagination, it's rather more so intention as we get to see with Kieran. This literally checks out for all the mysteries regarding these aspects of Area Zero, but obviously there are still some unanswered things, such as what are these crystals and how did they get there? What about Terrapagos? Was there an ancient civilization in Area Zero? So many things, so, so many things are still left, but honestly, I think the Teal Mask has answered a bunch of them. But despite that, this is just a theory. There's every possibility that I'm totally wrong about this, and this is something else altogether. And in fact, next week, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the Momotaro Pokemon that's in the game's data from the Teal Mask, and talk about the theory that everyone has been raving on about on Twitter and add my own thoughts to it. But for now, there is every possibility that I'm totally wrong about this, and that this is something else altogether. But between Heath and the Paradox Pokemon, Kieran and the Loyal Trio, and Carmine and what she said about the Crystal Pool, I want to say that this is a strong, strong theory as to what the hidden treasure of Area Zero really is. But you're gonna have to let me know down below as to what you think about it. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed. Take care of yourselves, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you over on the next video, alright? Later!